All right, congratulations. You guys have made it to chapter 12, temperature regulation. This is one of the last things we're going to talk about this semester. And it's actually a really cool integration of a lot of the different stuff we've been talking about for the last month or so. Temperature regulation involves transport of heat by the cardiovascular system, involves exercise performance, and lots of other factors. Uh, so I'm excited for you guys to jump in. Uh, here's some of the things first to, to put in context. Why does it matter? Uh, one of the reasons why it matters is because we go a lot of places as humans. Uh, we're not stuck to just one very narrow range of temperatures, right? Uh, we go in the cold. Uh, here's my son. This is my oldest son. He was a little baby then. Uh, out playing in the snow, right? We play in the snow, we go hang out in the desert or even more in the desert, right? So we're, we have this range of temperatures where we're going plus or minus 100 degrees Fahrenheit all the time. Uh, <clears throat> in fact, in Utah, it's not uncommon for you to have huge swings in temperature from day to day. Uh, even look at like people that are working in environments like this where they working in a factory, they're exposed to huge, huge temperatures, right? Very high, very hot. And somehow our bodies allow us to handle this. Um, we have a very flexible body in that, in that regard that we can handle going out in the cold or in the heat. Um, and the better we can handle those conditions, the, the more we can perform, right? And that has huge implications for physical fitness, for ability to fight wars. Um, the government, U.S. government, has a lot of interest in, in, in environmental physiology, how well soldiers can adapt to places like, like this or this, right? We need, or the, the cold snow. We need our soldiers to be able to perform at top levels in order to handle all this stuff. And so the, there's actually a, a decent amount of physiologists that work for the military, trying to develop ways to improve conditions and fitness for soldiers, uh, workers as well, uh, and just all of us. Uh, even like older individuals are more sensitive to heat and cold. And so, so these things can be life threatening in certain conditions. Now, in terms of what I want you guys to think about as you go throughout the semester, I want you guys to look at, at this uh, diagram here, this graph. In this graph, this group of people took uh, marathon times. They looked at the winning marathon time for marathons all throughout a year, and then they, they compared it to the ambient temperature on that day. And what they found is that the fastest marathon times happened around 13, 14 degrees Celsius. And if you got hotter than that, uh, you slowed down. If it got colder than that, you also slowed down. So this was like the little happy spot, right? 13 degrees Celsius, somewhere around 54 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, that's the optimum temperature to run uh, your best race at, your best marathon. Uh, this has been replicated in, in multiple different scenarios. And what I want you guys to focus on as you watch these videos and as you read the text is figure out why. Why would this be the happy spot? Why would this be the temperature that you can run your fastest marathon at? Uh, go throughout the physiology for, for everything and see if you can figure it out. Uh, and I'll actually, on your pop quiz on Friday, there will be a question about that where you'll have to explain why the fastest marathon times happen at that temperature. And you'll have to be able to explain why you slow down when things get hotter. All right. There's some really cool stuff with temperature regulation. I, I hope you enjoy it and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.